What is going on today, guys? Welcome back. Today is going to be the first in a new series I'm tentatively calling uh, Nasty Tones. Uh, as you just heard there, that was a pretty, very nasty tone. And uh, maybe a little displeasing to the ear, something unconventional, something that you're not used to. And that's entirely the point. Uh, just this morning, I was watching a new video by Stay Metal Ray, where he was kind of validating, defending, if you will, uh, his personal live rig tone. Now, it is a very nasty, kind of grungy, unforgiving, unrelenting tone, but it works for him and it works well in his mix and with his, his band. And I get it too. I mean, we're not all, it's, it's subjective. We're not all gonna like each other's tone and that's the end of it, right? Uh, you might have a lot of gear that you're displeased with because you just don't like the way it sounds so you never play through it, whether it be at a cheap guitar, an old cheap amp or some cheap pedals or you know even some really expensive amp sims or whatever you have and you just can't seem to dial in a good tone. Or conversely, you keep playing the same tones and you've played through the same tones for years and years. You're so familiar with them that you never tweak anything. You kind of set it and forget it. That's all well and good. However, you know, once in a while you should try to explore new tonal territory, let's put it that way. Um, you know, something that challenges you to write different riffs and different licks, something that maybe inspires you to do something that you didn't do before. Now, this particular tone was basically a happy accident. I recently acquired a new uh, Boss Digital Delay pedal, and I decided to go ahead and just, I wanted to hear what the delay sounded like. I didn't really care about how I set it up, you know, where I set it up in the chain. So I basically just plugged my guitar into it and ran straight into the front of my amp, not thinking at the time that obviously I'm not going through the effects loop, I'm going straight to the front of the amp, so I'm hitting the preamp with this pedal. So this delay is pre everything. Um, that's why if you're gonna play through a distorted tone like I just did there, you're gonna get distorted delays, distorted repeats, which was unexpected because I just, I wasn't thinking. I just stuck it in, plug it in. I'm like, I just wanna hear this real quick. And I did it and I'm thinking to myself, why does it sound so crappy? Not that it's really crappy, not that it's really a bad sound, it just was so unexpected. Uh, and especially for the fact that it's a digital delay, it's not an analog or a tape delay. However, in this particular circumstance, each consecutive repeat um, degrades or degenerates and you can hear it clearly. I'll just play you a couple of chords, you know. You hear that? You know, it sounds kind of, you know, some people do that type of tone intentionally in the studio and it was just a byproduct of me not thinking and just rushing to get the pedal plugged in. I just wanted to hear the delays and that's what I came up with. So, it just got me thinking that, you know, it's kind of cool to play something in a different fashion than you normally do or, or put your gear in a different order in the signal chain than you normally do. You know, likewise, if you use, let's say, a boost pedal like a Tube Screamer or whatever, any kind of a boost, overdrive, you know, distor distortion pedal, you're probably used to setting it the same settings all the time, every time, right? Or if you're new to, to boost pedals, you probably heard that you're supposed to put the drive all the way down, the level all the way up, and then the tone knob somewhere to suit whatever works for your particular amp and your, your guitar. But there are guitar players out there that do a lot of different things with those pedals that, you know, conventionally doesn't seem to make sense, but when they do it, it works and it works really well. Um, another video I was watching today by Plague Side Studios, who, by the way, that guy is really good. He's very scientifically like informative. Um, top to bottom, soup to nuts, the guy gives you all the information you need and more to make really well-informed decisions. He mentioned a guitar player, I forget which one, but it's obviously some famous guy from a famous band. And um, he said that that guy uses like a tube screamer in a heavy, heavy distorted metal type of tone, but he puts a drive all the way up and the tone knob all the way down. Now it got me to thinking, you know, obviously you're gonna get some really different results with something like that, but it goes against conventional thinking, but it works for him. So what we're gonna do is once a week, I'm gonna to try to keep to that schedule if I can. I'll probably forget about this by tomorrow, but who knows. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna bring you some nasty tones, right? Something different every time. So today it's just basically this digital delay into the front of this amp. Sorry, Glenn, I'm still using the Line 6 Spider amp. Mine is the 212 150 watt uh, combo. It sounds pretty good. I, I realize it's a bedroom amp, it's a practice amp, it's an amp modeler, whatever you wanna call it. Um, but it, it gives me satisfactory tones and I'm familiar with it. So I wanted to mix it up and um, 
Got the Charvel DK24 two point trim on today. Basically what I did here for this particular tone is I'm all the way in the first position. So I'm on the humbucker, uh, excuse me. So I'm on the um, bridge pickup, but I've used the coil split, coil tap. And then I've rolled the tone down to about six and a half, seven. So it cut out some of the highs because again, I've mentioned this before, that full shred pickup is very bright and brittle and you really have to dial back the, um, the treble. So again, it's a meaty tone. It's not too overly distorted and it's not too much of any one thing, but it's definitely nasty and I just really dig it. <laughs> What do you guys think? Do you ever do anything like that? Um, do you have this digital delay? This is a DD3, so I guess it's the third version of this pedal. I'm really unfamiliar with pedals. I'm not a, really a pedal guy, but I've become one recently. I'm having a lot of fun with this one. And like I said, this was a happy accident, but I could see myself using a tone like this. This is a great rhythm tone. And for me personally, normally when I'm dialing in a new tone and a new amplifier or new settings or what have you, I generally gravitate towards tones that are useful as both a rhythm and a lead. So more often than not, you'll hear some time delay, some modulation on my tone, whether I'm doing rhythm or, you know, solos. That's just what I do. That's just what I'm familiar with. And I guess that all stemmed from like an Eddie Van Halen type tone. Now, I just found out within the last year that he was doing the wet, dry, wet thing or dry, wet, wet or whatever you want to call it and mixing it all together in the studio. But I always wondered, why does his tone sound so full and fat and rich, but you can still hear the pick attack? And it's basically just boosted for the leads. I mean, it doesn't sound a whole lot different, his solos versus his rhythm work. And I've always loved tones like that. So that's what I generally gravitate towards, unless I'm looking for something more specific for different applications. So again, this particular tone right here in the line six, I've had this for years, set this way, this patch. Uh, I call it the crazy, crazy 80s because that's kind of what it sounds like to me. And then again, just hit the delay and next thing you know, it's just, uh, it's beefy because it's going through the front of the amp. It's not going through the effects loop because this particular amplifier doesn't even have an effects loop. So you can't run it post uh, the preamp. So this is the only way it's going to go into this amp. So. <laughs> sloppy but you get the point so that's my nasty tone for this week hope you liked it leave me a comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are have you ever done anything similar to this where you've taken your gear and just totally twist the knobs and put them in de directions that you never did before and come up with something really cool and unique and a little bit gritty a little bit nasty unconventional um, maybe it even sounds hissy or you know too garbly or or it's farting out, who knows what the sound is, but maybe you've done something and you really liked it. And remember, at the end of the day, you're the only person you need to impress with your tone. So if you like the way it sounds, it is good. Listen to nobody else. On the other hand, if you're looking to mix and record and stuff like that, you have to fit in the mix. So the sound has to be tailored a little bit, you know, to kind of play well with the rest of the instruments and the vocalists and all that stuff. Or if you're on stage, same thing. But if you're in your room, your house all alone, you're just playing by yourself, crank the bass up on that thing, who knows? Um, crank up the treble, do whatever, you know, do something different with it and see if you surprise yourself with some cool new tones. So again, this is gonna be first in the series of nasty tones, nasty guitar tones. Hope you liked it. Uh, we'll come back to you real soon. See ya! Wow, forget it.